there's a little bit of self-reliance that you're going to need while you're out there on the water. We are still a few years from reaching our goal of cruising around the world, but we're using this time to hone our skills and prepare for living in some of the most remote areas. If you're planning your big cruising adventure, there's a little bit of self-reliance that you're going to need while you're out there on the water. You can't just call a mechanic. There's a lot on a boat that can go wrong at any time, and when things break, we want to be sure we know how to fix it ourselves. If you own a sailboat that was built in the 1970s or 80s and is between 35 and 45 feet, there's a really good chance that you've got a Perkins 4108 engine on that boat. This is one of the most iconic engines in maritime history. It's been put on thousands and thousands of boats. It's a marinized tractor engine, which means that they basically took something that was already available at the time and made it boat safe. It has been proven as one of the most robust engines on the market, even today. But that does not mean that it doesn't have potential flaws. One of the main issues that people will run into with their DPA pump is that the oil seals will break down over time and begin to leak diesel. In the worst case scenario, that diesel can actually get into the engine, and that's a common flaw with this engine. If that goes unnoticed, you'll have diesel in your oil, which can lead to what's called a runaway diesel engine. Now checking for diesel leaks should be part of your regular maintenance on this engine. If you have a leak inside the engine, you'll be able to tell that by the oil level in your engine going up. We were fortunate enough that our diesel was leaking out of the engine. How do you get to the pump? Well, to get to the pump, depending on what type of engine you have, you need a couple tools to do that, to take off those pieces. So we have a flathead screwdriver, a 5 8 and half inch wrench, and a socket wrench. You'll also want at least two extenders and joints to help you reach each bolt in a full set of sockets. And we're gonna show you how to use these. So one of the very first things that you need to do before you start breaking down your engine is drain the coolant. I recommend using a siphon pump like this, that way you can put the coolant right back into a jug and keep it for later because it is still good coolant. If you don't take the coolant out, it's gonna spill when you start taking apart the exhaust manifold. Because of how this engine is designed, you need to take off the cooling system to even see the pump. That includes the coolant tank and exhaust manifold. Taking off the coolant tank is as simple as taking out these two bolts with your 9 16th inch wrench. Then, disconnect the hoses that connect it to the exhaust manifold. As you carefully wiggle it off, you may spill some residual coolant, so make sure you have a plan to clean it up so it doesn't accidentally discharge into the environment through your bilge pump. On our model of the engine, the coolant tank sits right on top of the thermostat. More modern versions may have a separate housing for this. Now to the hard part. To get the exhaust manifold off, you need to remove the other coolant hose. The design of this manifold is not friendly to your wrenches. There are four nuts that need to be removed. You will need a combination of your half inch wrench and your socket wrench with the extender and joints to reach each one. Once these four are removed, you'll slide the manifold off, but be prepared to remove the high pressure lines from the injectors if they get in the way. Now we can see the pump. Before taking apart any of the fuel lines, label them so that you can get them back in the correct order. You need to also remove the throttle and shutoff lines to get the pump out. Be sure to mark them so you can reattach them at the same length when we're finished. There are three mounting bolts. On mine, the upper corner is a hex head socket screw, and the other two are half inch bolts. You'll also want to make what's called a match mark on the body of the pump and engine. This mark allows you to put it back exactly where it was when you took it off. Misalignment of the pump can cause your engine to perform worse, so please, please, please do not skip this step. I also want to point out this air bleeder screw located on the side of the pump. We'll need this when the pump is back on the engine. After disconnecting the pump and draining the diesel out of it, I broke it down while taking careful notes to track every piece and every seal that sits between each piece. I sorted the pieces by where they fit and which seals went between them, and put them in labeled containers to ensure they didn't get mixed up. 
Now you might be looking at this pump and thinking, golly gee, that is a lot of parts. But it's really not a super complex part. Here I've taken it apart as far as it needs to be to change the exterior seals. This is the main pump body. Inside there are more components that pressurize your diesel, but if you're not leaking here at the pump shaft, I would definitely not recommend taking this apart any further than this. This end plate assembly is a fuel inlet and regulator that controls how much diesel can get into the pump. It attaches here to the low pressure transfer pump end of the injector. This is the transfer pump liner that sits inside there. There's also two wiper blades that might come in your rebuild kit that you can also replace at this time. These are called banjo outlets. They are what connect the high pressure lines from the pump to the injector nozzles on the engine. This is the fuel back connection that allows some fuel to leak past and return to the filter. This is the hydraulic governor. It has the fuel throttle control arm and the fuel shutoff on either side of it. It also has an idling screw that can be adjusted to control your engine's idle speed. This is the timing advanced control piece. It is where we found we had a diesel leak. Adjusting this can change the timing of your entire pump, so be very careful if you take this off, put it back exactly as it was. Now to replace the seals, you'll need a kit. I bought mine off of partsforengines.com. This is not an ad. They also offer a rebuild service you can pay for if you want this professionally done. I also went ahead and bought a new seal and thermostat kit, as well as some new gaskets for the exhaust manifold. If you're looking for parts, I highly recommend checking their site first. They have affordable prices and a great selection. Again, this is not an ad. With the pump off, I went ahead and refreshed the paint on the parts to help make my engine shine again using diesel safe primer and paints. If you choose to paint your pump, be sure to mask off the sealing surfaces to prevent issues with paint in the future because even the tiniest flake of paint in your diesel can clog the pump. Replace the seals that need replacing and put the pump back together in reverse order of how you took it apart. Remember, and I cannot stress this enough, when you put this back on the engine, align the marks you made previously. The rest is as easy as reconnecting your fuel lines, get the exhaust manifold back on, then your coolant tank, and refill your coolant to an appropriate level. The last step is to purge the air out of your injector pump. Loosen the air bleeder on the side and use the manual lever on your lifting pump. Keep in mind you'll need to pump way more than you might think to fully purge the air out of the pump. Once clean diesel starts flowing out of the bleeder, you're actually not finished. You need to keep pumping for a little longer. Finally, to get the last bits of air out of your pump, you'll need to turn the engine over. And that's all! If you thought this video was helpful, let me know in the comments, and subscribe to follow along on our adventure as we get ready to go cruising around the world.